Hello crafters, I hope your Tuesday is going awesome. Today's video, I am going to be taking some of the leftover items from my gazillion VBS videos and I'm going to be repurposing them for crochet projects. So as you saw from the title and the thumbnail, which is probably why you clicked on this video, to be honest, is we are going to be making some tablecloth plarn. <laughs> If you are not familiar with the concept of plarn, it's basically just yarn made from plastic materials. Usually it's made from things like plastic bags, like from the grocery store or plastic trash bags. If you aren't familiar with plarn, click that link above. But today I'm going to show you how to make plarn out of plastic tablecloths like these or this. Today I'm going to show you how I make the plarn because it takes a little bit of time. I'm also going to show you if you want to spin the plarn. I have an awesome drop spindle that my dad made and I'll show you how you can spin it with the drop spindle. That's an option. You don't have to do this step. And then hopefully I'll get a video up showing a project you can make with this plarn. But until I post another video with a plarn pattern tutorial, you can always click the card up there to make your own plarn bag. So really all you need for this, plastic tablecloth, scissors, a little bit of time, and a little bit of patience as well. So the first step is we're going to take our tablecloths and we're going to cut them into these long ribbons that we will then tie together. Now, this looks like a mess. Unless you're using like leftover tablecloths from some event that you like wipe down, which I mean, go, you can go for that if you want, or you can just buy, you know, a tablecloth that's already in a package. If, but if you're getting one that's already in a package, this step will be a little bit easier because it's already going to be folded up somewhat. But the first thing we need to do is we need to fold our tablecloth in a certain way. So let me clear my workspace here and then we, I will show you how to do that. So I'm going to show you in this fun floral one. That's what's so awesome about making tablecloth plarn is you can use funky patterns, you can use funky colors, lots of fun, lots of options. Also, my tablecloths are a little bit ripped from being used, but yours won't be, so it'll be a little bit easier than some of the problems I may run into. But first we need to open this up long ways. Let me adjust the camera. All right, now you can probably tell that when I said I'm cleaning off the table, I literally just took all my stuff and threw it on the floor. But regardless, this is what I mean by long ways. And what I need to do is I need to start folding this up. So I'm gonna start by folding it end to end. So this top edge here, fold it to the bottom edge. And there's a rogue piece of tape left. So end to end. And the purpose of folding this is so that way when it's time to make our cuts, we have a lot less cutting to do. So get it folded in half. Try to keep it fairly smooth because it will turn out better. So at the corners, I'm going to straighten those out, neaten those out. And then I'm gonna fold it in half another time, same way, end to end, kind of like you're folding, you know, a flat sheet or something like that. And then after I've got a few folds and it's way shortened, kind of like this, I'm going to take it and kind of roll it up on itself with a bunch of short folds. What I mean by that is I'm gonna take it and fold it over just a few inches like so, keeping it as neat as I can. And I'm just gonna keep rolling this up all the way to the end. Again, try to keep your ends as neat as possible. So this is what we have now. It's this long roll that's been folded up. And I might fold it up one more time. But the gist is we're going to now make a bunch of cuts along this way. And by rolling it up on itself, it means that we can do these short cuts instead of having to cut the whole long length of the table. So once I reach this point, I'm going to start cutting. The ends will be a little bit wonky. But once we make those first few cuts on this end, and except for the last few cuts on the other end, it's going to turn out fairly smooth. So I've got my scissors here, and I'm just going to cut a slit along. Now how wide you make it is totally up to you. Because tablecloth plastic is a little bit stretchy, I like to go kind of thick so that way it's harder to stretch. But once we make that cut with just that really quick cutting motion, I now have this long strip. Okay, and this is what we're gonna turn into our yarn. So just gonna set this off to the side and keep making cuts all the way down. You wanna try to keep all your cuts about the same width. So I'm gonna go about an inch each time, maybe a little more than an inch. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. You can totally make yourself a paper guide that you lay on top to make all yours exactly the same width, or you can just kind of eyeball it like I'm doing. And I will cut a bunch of these little slivers all the way down. Also, my scissors are really dull, so it might take me a bit. All 
All right, so here we are getting to the end. As I mentioned, the end's gonna be a little bit goofy because as you can see, it's not as neat here, but that's okay. We're just gonna keep cutting and we'll salvage what we can from this. All right, so these are all our nice scraps. I'm gonna look at these ones really quick, but if they're only like this big, it's okay if you get rid of them. Don't kill yourself over trying to save every little scrap because you would just end up hating this project if you try to connect all these little bitty scraps. But what I have here is instead of a tablecloth, I have all these little bundles. If I unroll them, except for the spots where I had tears in mine, I will have these nice long strips of tablecloth. So I'm just going to unwind these and lay them out here so you can see what we've got. But now this looks a little bit like yarn, but you might be wondering, okay, what now? Because we've got a bunch of individual pieces. So what I like to do is I like to tie these together. Now, what I found out earlier with doing this is before you even start tying, if you have these really long pieces, start winding it into a ball. If you just leave all your pieces loose and connected, you will end up with knots. I learned that the hard way. But let's go ahead and attach these two together. Basically what I'm going to do is tie a knot. There's lots of different ways. My favorite way is to put the ends together and basically just tie an overhand knot where I have a loop and I put my tails through the loop and then pull it tight. And try to keep the knot close towards your tail ends because that'll minimize on the excess that you have. You wanna pull it snug, but don't pull it too tight because if you do pull too hard, like am I pulling this end here, you will tear your tablecloth. So remember not to be too rough with it. But now that I've attached this piece, I'm going to keep winding my ball of yarn. And I would recommend winding it into a ball as you go, even if you do plan to spin it. Got my next end, so I'm going to add my next piece. Also, since mine's torn at spots like this, I'm just gonna go ahead and already tear it because I know it's gonna tear in the process and I'll just have to have an extra knot there. But same way to join, put my ends together, make a nice big loop, and run the tails through the loop. Trying to keep that knot as close to the end as possible so that way those tails are really short. Pull gently to cinch up the knot and then keep winding my plarn. So let me finish winding this up. This is the tedious part that I was talking about, and then I'll give you some pointers for crocheting with this before we jump into spinning. So here I have attached my plarn together, and I rolled it into two balls because I'm going to be spinning this. So if you plan to spin, I would try to split your strips into even piles and make each pile into its own skein of yarn because personally, I like to spin two strands together versus just one, I think it's a little stronger. We'll cover that in a few minutes. First, let's talk about crocheting with it without spinning it. So if you look at it right now, it looks kind of thick, but once we start actually working with it, it can squish up really small. So if you kind of compare this bit right here with the piece next to it and kind of see that difference of how thin versus thick it looks here, so you need to keep that in mind. So generally you need a bit of a smaller hook. I usually like to go with a US size H. I'm not using my favorite H hook, but in the description below, I'll link to the hook that, I'm, that I normally use. But to crochet with it, you can work with it just like normal. The trick is not to do your knots too tight because if you pull something too tight, like my slip knot here, I'm gonna stretch it weird or I'm going to snap it. And we obviously don't want our projects to snap. So when working with it, you know, start with a slip knot. And again, so I went too snug with that, so it's kind of hard to size down this loop. But you can chain with it like normal. You can really do any kind of stitch. I'll do a little bit here so you can get a feel for what it will look like. And if you don't spin it, your plarn will stay a little bit thicker, a little bit fluffier. Let's start working single crochet back, and then I'll show you. The plarn is a little bit of kind of grabby because it has that stretch to it. So you wanna be careful with your tension that you're not holding it too tight, but also that you're not holding it too loose. And you may find you need to take a break or use hand lotion because sometimes it can make your hands feel a little bit raw. But that's usually once you've been working with it for a really long time. There's the back of some single crochet stitches and there's the front. I'll do one more row and then I'll fasten this off so we can compare it with a little bit done in our spun plarn. 
So for the last part of this video, let's talk about hand spinning our plarn. Here's some I spun earlier from a yellow tablecloth. And it gets kind of stiff when you spin it. So to spin, I am going to be using a bottom whirl drop spindle. This is one my dad made, which is super cool. And I personally prefer bottom whirl, which just means that the whirl, this weight is at the bottom versus the top. But since my dad doesn't like mass produce these, I'll put a link in the description below to one on Amazon that is really comparable to this. And it's got a lot of great reviews. But your drop spindle, regardless of whether you're using a top whirl or a bottom whirl, will have a hook this long kind of spoke, if you will, and a weight. So as I mentioned, I'm going to spin two strands together. That's why I have my two separate balls here. And I'm just gonna sit, leave them off to the side here. And I'm gonna grab my two ends. First thing I want to do is tie it around the base here. So I'm just gonna do kind of an overhand knot, maybe tie it a couple times, just so it stays in there fairly securely. The knot on the bottom. Wherever your whirl is, just put it underneath that. All right, so I've got it like that. I've got these two strands coming off. And then there's this hook up top. I'm going to kind of wrap it around and catch it in the hook. And then the way this works is you're going to take and you're gonna spin this bottom part and let it feed through your fingers. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a twist into our plastic tablecloth. Now it's a little bit different than spinning natural fibers, which I'm not very good at spinning natural fibers to start with, but it feels a little different than that because if you just try to let the weight, if you just give it a spin and try to let the weight of it pull it through, it's what's gonna most likely happen is it would just get really tight here at the bottom, stretch and break the plastic because the plastic is one thing that kind of stretches. Whereas if you're working with natural fibers, individual fibers move, whereas this is already one solitary unit. So keep that in mind. What I like to do is I like to hold my finger up kind of high I'm gonna twirl this and just let it slowly feed through my fingers. So now I'm getting to a knot here and the knots don't really like to transfer the twist. Right when I get to a knot, I like to unhook it. I'm gonna take this point that I've already made and wrap it around the spoke here. I don't actually know if it's called a spoke. I think it's probably called a spindle because it's a drop spindle. That makes a little more sense. The spindle, this long part, the thing that Sleeping Beauty puts her finger on. Get closer to the knot and then re-hook it. And then where I've got these tails, I'm gonna make sure to hold onto them as I'm twisting. And it'll twist those tails into our plarn that as we spin it, and they'll minimize them. Now here, I didn't hang onto it very well and put the twist in it that well, so it's still sticking out a little bit. You can always come back through and trim those if you want. And keep twisting and letting it feed through my fingers, fall further down. Once it gets too low, like I can't really keep spinning it, I'm just going to slow this all down. Wrap it around, re-hook it, and then keep spinning. It's really fun, but it's also a great upper body workout because this arm you're like spinning and this arm you're like holding way up high in the sky. You can also do this, like, I like to do this either sitting or standing because I can go a longer distance or hold my arm down lower. But to eat, it's kind of a to each his own kind of thing, just whatever feels comfortable. So you can feed it between your two fingers and kind of let it twist. Or something I do when my fingers start getting worn down is I'll hold it right here, kind of between my thumb and my hand and just let it slide through there. That has worked pretty well for me also. I'll just keep twisting a little bit at a time, slide it down, wrap it around. Okay, also let me pause for a second because I just realized I actually prefer top whirl. I was wondering why this felt a little weird. I prefer top whirl. I grabbed the wrong spindle here, but that's okay. Either one works, you get the same result. But I actually just realized that I do prefer the top whirl, not the bottom whirl, but it's kind of a to each his own kind of deal. It's honestly a really relaxing process in my opinion. Try to just feed through evenly so that we get an even twist all along. Right now and then you'll need to wrap it around your spindle. And then just keep repeating the process. So let me get this spun the rest of the way and then I'll show you a little bit of crocheting with this. My arm is killing me from holding it up like this for however long it took me to spin this, but now my tablecloth is spun. 
and I think it looks really cool. It's like really colorful, especially because I use the pattern tablecloth. So I'll show you just a little tidbit of crocheting with it, and then I'll give you a, a comparison of the not spun crochet look, and then the spun crochet look. So you can kind of get a feel for which option you may want to do. So here's the unspun one, and for sake of comparison, I'm going to use the same size hook that I did before. So when you start pulling it off of your spindle, it may kind of uncurl a little bit and that's okay. If you want to stop it from uncurling so much, give it a little bit of a stretch. That's another thing I'll mention is this is less likely to tear than this. This will still potentially tear though. So again, we can't go super tight. I'm going to create my slip knot, work a few chains across, and then I'll do a couple rows of single crochet to compare to our unspun plarn. Another thing I'll mention is plarn is usually pretty hard to frog or to unravel. So just keep that in mind when you're working on projects with plarn. And here is the sample that I spun. This is just two rows of single crochet. So if we compare the two, it's really a matter of preference. They each have their pros and cons. I like this because it's so fast because you skip the entire spinning process and it tends to work up a little faster. Also, I think the knots tend to blend in better with this. But the downside is right now it's all fluffy and filled in in all these spots, but over time with use, it kind of deflates where either it just kind of gets stretched or it just gets squished down. And so all of those sections that are filled in kind of start to look gapey. With the spun plarn, I like it because it's a lot stronger and I think it looks really cool. But some of the downsides are, yes, it takes a lot more time and it's a little, it's not as smooth to work with with the hook and things like knots don't blend in as well. So like this one's sticking way out on the back, it didn't catch very well. So you may need to adjust your hook sizing to get different results. But either way, spun or unspun, making tablecloth floor is super easy and it's also fairly inexpensive. This is a great material if you want to make like a tote bag, if you want to make reusable grocery bags. You can also use it for things like an outdoor table set. You can make placemats or coasters with this and it would stand up to the outdoor elements pretty well. So there you go. Now you know how to make tablecloth porn. If you've ever heard of this before or you've tried it, I'd love if you left a comment down below letting me know what your experience has been. And I'd also love to hear if you haven't heard of this, if you plan on trying this and what you think you want to make. I forgot where I was going with this. All right, my mind's totally going blank as I'm trying to do this outro here. I think that I get out, 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 crow, whatever. So I'm just gonna end this here and just say, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and as always, happy crafting. All right, so for our end clip here, I'm going to blow you all away with my amazing talents because not only can I crochet and make like tablecloth plarn, but I'm also a magician. First of all, I'm here. But then, abracadabra. Gotcha.